Virginia, before you get started, if you don't mind. Um, Do we have readers assigned for this? Yes. Welcome everyone and everyone that came this afternoon. It was a pleasure to meet you for the first time face to face, even though I could only see your eyes. Let us begin. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of you the God of all mercy perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion to the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet day after day, they seek me and delight to draw near God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you start your own interest on your fast day and oppress your, all your workers. Look. You fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice hard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? It is to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in a sackcloth and ashes. Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, your waters never, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt and you shall rise, you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Psalm um, 103. Verses 8 through 14. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. 
As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Valerie? A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, 20b-6 through 10. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left hand, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors, and yet a true, as unknown, and yet well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Here ends the reading of the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory be to you, O Lord. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces as so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. Praise be to Christ. I'm going to start um, asking a question that I asked a couple of people who were at the ashes to go today and see how you all handle this. There are only three things that a priest can do that a lay person cannot do. Can you name those three? Anyone? 
administer communion. Feel free to unmute and answer. Yeah. I heard uh, administer communion. That is not correct. Oh, that is not correct. Consecrate the host? <laughs> Consecrate the host and the wine. That's correct. Okay. That's one. Holy unction? Um, no. Absolution. By that you mean the anointing of people when they're going to die? Is that what you're meaning? Whoever said that? Um, yes. Okay, that's not correct. <laughs> Absolution. Absolution, when you make a confession and you are absolved by the priest, that's number two. And the third one? The blessing. A blessing, like a wedding blessing or something like that. Okay, so now you can see that there really isn't very much that the priests can do that you all cannot do. So I would like to challenge you all to think about the things that you have put off on the priest as that's their job, I can't do that. And see what you would be willing to take on during this Lenten season. Lent is a time when having heard um, what God wants us to do, and it's a time when people who were behaving very badly were made, might have been put out of the church or silenced or for a while, and it's the time where they make an additional effort to um, be received back into the community. So I want you to think of the things that you do that let other people see that you are a follower of Jesus Christ? How would they distinguish you from people who are not followers of Jesus Christ? How have you changed over the years? I can remember that when I was a child, most of the time um, adults expected children to give up fun things like eating candy or desserts. And a lot of adults have kept that into their adulthood that that's sufficient for giving up something for Lent. But I'd like to suggest that when we give up something, that we put something in its place. We've heard the story of the, the man who had a, a demon cast out from him and didn't do anything else. And then the demons came back and said, wow, the house is really clean. Now let's all move in because there was space that the space that Jesus made in this man was not filled with godly things. So I want us to think about during this season, how we can not change everything about us because we have enough things that we can work on till the end of our lives, but one or two things that we can change about how we live our lives now or how we look at other people um, that will make us better ambassadors for God and for his son, Jesus Christ. I think back when I was a child and there are two that I'll share with you. One was in seventh grade, I thought I was being really noble and um, it certainly was gonna be a sacrifice for me as I gave up television for Lent. And the embarrassing result of that was that all my grades went up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was something that was revealed to me that I was probably watching too much television or it had too high a priority. Then I remember in high school that I had, I think, grown a little bit to understand it's not just giving up something fun like candy or television or video games, but I needed to change something about the person that I was to be more reflective of, of God. And I chose to give up being sarcastic. And I thought of sarcastic, being sarcastic was something that I thought in some way made me a little superior to the other people that I might be sarcastic to and they didn't get it. You know, that I had said something to them that was really kind of not very nice and cutting, but they didn't understand what I was saying. So I felt superior and patted myself on the back. And when I realized that, that that was becoming too frequent in my life. I said, I'll give that up for Lent because that's not the kind of person I want to be. 
and it was tough and I did. And I am very much less sarcastic now over the years than I was then. And I certainly don't see that as a way that's particularly helpful a lot of times with, with the way I behave or the way anybody else behaves. So it's not just giving up something fun, but it's taking on something that will help you to become a better person. And when I asked the question at the beginning, what are the three things that priests can do that lay people can't do? And you are all kind of struggling with that. That means that you really don't know what your responsibilities as a Christian are, not all of them. You have passed off a lot of things to the priests to do, oh, well, I can't do that. I can remember going to um, an interview for an interim position and the, the church had been, they had done their plan for about three or four years before this interview happened. And so when I was looking at the plan that they had for the church, I read down a list of uh, six, five or six priorities that they had. And I asked, well, which ones have you been working on while you've been having supply priests who've been in an interim period. And they said, we're waiting for the new rector. And I thought to myself, this is not the place to go. Because the reality is that if they were the strong church they said they were with lots of strong lay people, none of the things that were on their list of priorities required a priest. And I think sometimes we put the responsibility, we say, well, that's the priest's responsibility to do so that we don't have to think about doing it or making time for it or struggling with doing something different or new in our lives. And so this Lent, I really want us to think about growing, about growing more. There are more things that people can do. I have um, in the past asked people, well, how about you, um, pass out the wine, you know, carry a chalice or um, when we have a little intinction bowl for the wafers to do that. And they go, oh, no, 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 I couldn't do that. Or I remember when I, the first time I was the only priest in a church and one of the altar guild people came to me and said, would it be all right if we, we wanted to wash the linens that are in the ombre where we keep the reserve sacrament? Would that be all right? Or could you get them out for us? And I thought to myself, why would they need to ask me that? They're the altar guild. And so I said, just go get them. It's not like I think you're gonna you know, throw them on the floor or blow your nose with them or anything like that. You're the altar guild and you handle all of the things that we use during communion with respect. So why would I think you would do any differently here? And they were really shocked because the previous priests had not allowed them to go in there. It was too holy a place for them to touch. Well, that's kind of silly. It's not that there's anything wrong with the people that thought that, but that's not the way it, there's nothing in our canons or nothing in our traditions that said that only the priests can do everything. So now that you know, there are only three things that I can do that the church does not allow you to do. There's a whole lot of things and a whole lot of you. And if we share the work and learn from each other, I think that would be a very worthwhile Lenten season that we grow and share. So there's all the responsibility isn't on one person or just on your vestry. The vestry has specific responsibilities, but all of us, the majority of what God wants us to do are in the baptismal covenant. So when we were baptized, Either we ourselves or our parents on our behalf committed us to do all of those things. So one thing that I would suggest as homework for the Lenten, for Lenten season is to read the baptismal covenant, which you find in your prayer books. Um, and I think it's probably in the 300s, low 300s. So that's a place that you can look and read that and see what you have committed to. And when we have a baptism, and I hope we're gonna have one um, close to Easter, either the day before or on Easter, that we all renew our baptismal covenant. And so you have Lent to get prepared and see what it is to do. 
So the season of Lent is one for us to be intentional about improving our practices as a Christian. It also means opening our minds as we were doing um, during the last three weeks of Epiphany to see how people in other parts of the world look at and hear the scripture by sharing the liturgy that they had written and using that. And a number of people said to me, they really liked the wording of it and the emphasis and all of that. So that's something else we can look at. A lot of place, every place, every church I've ever gone to, when you ask them, what are you willing to give up so that new people can come to the church? And they all look at me like, give up? Like that never had crossed their mind that they would have to give up anything. But all of us do when we wanna do something for people that we care about. We don't want our two-year-old to stay two all of their lives. While it's disruptive to our life and it's a change for them and for us, we don't want them to stay two forever. We don't want our kids to live in our house forever. We want them to become adults and be able to function on their own. And that's what our goal is. So clearly we don't want them to behave when they're 25, like they did when they were five. And you see that there's some adults that allow their children to do that when you watch some of these shows on television, when they go on to, to a, a talk show and they're asking, I'm trying, I want, we want our 31 year old son to move out of our house and get a job. And they don't know how to do that. So things change over our lives and we don't want to get in the way of growing in grace. We want to be willing to take, accept the challenge that comes from God when we realize that we have a, an area of our life where we need to grow or where we could grow. So one of the things that I have um, talked to Dini and some of the vestry about is forming a worship committee so that everybody who's on the worship committee will really understand how to put together special liturgies, regular liturgies, um, how to share the information, be able to preach in case the, the priest at the last minute gets long, laryngitis and can't talk that they would have something to say. I was married to a Presbyterian minister and I took a class of preaching with him and the, and the, the preaching professor at the seminary where they both worked in California. And one of the things that they said um, is, if you can't talk about Jesus for 10 minutes, that's kind of a sorry Christian. Because you can talk about Baseball, football, soccer, cooking, movies you've been to for more than 10 minutes. So we all need to think about what will we say? And the reality is that most of the time, if you're gonna to talk to someone that you haven't had that kind of conversation with before, you only have two minutes. Because if you don't say anything that catches their attention in two minutes, they're not listening anymore. They're looking at you and shaking their head politely and planning their grocery lists and wondering what, when you're gonna stop talking so they can get off the phone and go get a beer or a cookie or something like that. So this is a season about how do we help ourselves to grow, ourselves and other people to grow in grace. So I think that's enough homework, overall homework. I'll give more specific things to consider as we go through the season of Lent. But tonight, we acknowledge before God and for the before the community that we can improve. We need to improve. We have not done everything that God wants us to do. And truth be told, we haven't done some things that we didn't want God to ask us to do. And so we pretend we just didn't hear it. We didn't know that. So we're going through to acknowledge that we are imperfect people, knowing that God loves us anyway and is always available to encourage us to grow to be the people he created us to be. And so let us continue the bottom of page four. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them 
by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who because of notorious sins had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you therefore in the name of the church to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance as our mark of our mortal nature. Let us now bow our heads before the Lord, our maker and redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. A few of the people who came by today picked up little containers of ashes so that they could anoint their family members at home with the ashes. So when you impose the ashes on someone else, and my husband is here, he didn't get his ashes, so I will anoint him. Remember that you are but dust and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are but dust, and to dust you shall return. Let us read together but muted. So our reader, and I'll read aloud, and Dini even join us, but um, please say the words as we go through this, even though every, even though you're not, even though you are muted. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses, wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin. And, and I, shall I shall be pure, wash, wash me, me, and, and I, I shall, shall be clean indeed. indeed. Make, Make me hear of joy and gladness, and gladness that and the body you broken, broken may, may rejoice. rejoice. Hide your face my from my sins and God blot out all my iniquities. iniquities. <coughs> Create in me a clean, a clean heart, heart God. O God. And, and renew a right within spirit me. within me. Ask not away from your presence and take not your Holy, your Holy spirit, spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your words to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver, Deliver me from, me from death, death, O God, oh God and, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, of righteousness O God of my, God salvation. my salvation. Open, Open my lips, O Lord, Lord and, and my, my mouth shall proclaim, your, proclaim praise. your praise. Had you desired it, desired it I, I would have offered sacrifice, but you, you take no delight in 
burnt offerings. Sacrifice, sacrifice of bodies, of troubled, troubled spirit, the broken and a contrite heart, God, you will not despise. Yes. Let me have the reader um, read the congregational parts, but those of you who are at home, read the congregational parts as we do it, just on you. <coughs> Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed. Indeed. My by what we have done and by what we have left undone. undone. We have not <laughs> loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have um, mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to justice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably, favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring us with all your sins to the joy of his resurrection. <clears throat> Mighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may, re they may turn from their wickedness and lives, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their <clears throat> sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Also with you. With you. I was cautioning people that I um, spoke to this morning um, with words of wisdom from my husband. He said, when you exchange the peace, a lot of times we've been doing this. He said, don't do that because people with high powered cameras can zoom in and get your fingerprints and therefore get into your personal business. So find some other way, elbows, salutes, but palms facing to yourself so they can't get that information. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also, with, also you. with you. Grant, most merciful Lord, mm -hmm. to your faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from their sins and serve you with a 
quiet mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. 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 Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Virginia. Before everyone um, leaves, please um, check the chat line. The virtual plate offering link is posted on there. So if you get some time tonight or for the rest of the week, please click the link and make your plate offering. Thank you. Have a blessed rest of the week and look forward to seeing you all on Sunday. Thank you. You Thank too. You. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night, Good night everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Have a peaceful and restful night. Amen. You too. Amen. You know the screen is full. <laughs>